type of insertion be given while operating on common bile duct. For this, we should be knowing the basic anatomy of hepatobiliary tract. This is a liver. Okay. Now you tell me what is the most important blood supply to the liver? This is actually portal vein. But when I make diagram like this, now when I'm making this duct here, now what about common bile duct? Okay. Here main blood supply is arterial. Okay. And remember here arterial blood supply is in this direction like this, in this direction. Okay. When arterial blood supply is in, in this direction, then we cannot give incision like this. We cannot give incision like this because I can damage blood vessels, right? So what is the most important incision? How we are going to give the incision here? Incision should be given in this manner, right? A straight line. So answer is longitudinal incision. Question is, now which arteries are supplying here? Now I'll show you a diagram and you will be having more clarity. Remember here, inferior bile duct is supplied by posterior superior pancreatic or duodenal and gastro duodenal arteries. And these are located at three o'clock and nine o'clock position in this manner, right? And superior common bile duct is supplied by right hepatic and cystic arteries. Okay, so these are basic parts of anatomy. Now the question is, what are the other questions which we should be anticipating in the exam related to biliary tract? Most important topic here you should be knowing about stone in bile duct. After that, T-tube insertion and then infection and inflammation of duct that is called as cholangitis. Related to cholangitis, one important and very famous triad you should be knowing that is called as Charcot's triad. And after that, it can progress to Reynolds pentod. Question is, most important topic here you should be knowing, stone in bile duct. And now, related to this topic, what are the most anticipated questions? First of all, a stone in bile duct, which is called as cholidocolithiasis. After that, you should be knowing about T-tube insertion. And when we have to take the radiological image, after that, a very important triad related to exam that is called as Charcot's triad. One by one, we are going to learn. And now the first important point is related to CBD stone. See, I hope you are able to recall your knowledge of pathology and surgery. There are two types of CBD stone. One is called the primary, another is called as secondary. See, the primary stone means like a stone formation was there in bile duct itself. This is more common among Asian population. But secondary stone, see the primary site of a stone formation was gallbladder. After that, this got slipped in the bile duct. So in Western countries, it is more common. Remember here, whenever there will be CBD stone, what is the first investigation to be done? It is always ultrasound. Investigation of choice, MRCP, but gold standard is ERCP. Remember, ERCP will help you in a diagnosis also and a stone removal also means management also. That's why ERCP is gold standard. All right. Now, when to use ERCP? Remember, when the size of a stone is less than 1.5 centimeter, then yes, ERCP should be done. If size of a stone is more than 1.5 centimeter, please don't use ERCP. At that time, you have to operate. You have to give incision over bile duct, right? So whenever size is more than 1.5 centimeter, you have to do what? Call it dichotomy. But if there is a distal obstruction also, you have to give incision over duodenum also. Now the procedure will be called duodenostomy. So on the basis of size of the stone, you should be knowing this. Now, whenever we are going to talk about CBD stone, we should be knowing that when you are going to diagnose CBD stones. CBD stones you can diagnose before and after cholecystectomy or during the cholecystectomy also, right? Easy to understand before and after. If you get to know about bile duct stone, okay, then ERCP stone extraction is the better answer, right? 
बट रिमेंबर ड्यूरिंग दिस सर्जरी ड्यूरिंग कॉलेज सिस्टिक्टिमी इफ यू गेट टू नो अबाउट बाइल डॉक्टर स्टोन इफ यू फाइंड इट एट दैट टाइम ड्यूरिंग सर्जरी इट्स यू कैन यूज ई आर सी पी एंड यू कैन एक्सप्लोर ड्यूरिंग दिस सर्जरी इट्स राइट इंट्रा ऑपरेटिव सी बी डी एक्सप्लोरेशन हियर यू कैन यूज लेप्रोस्कोपिक मशीन और ओपन सर्जरी एंड आफ्टर दैट पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव ई आर सी पी नाउ now the importance of t tube first of all remember here whenever we are going to operate on cbd on bile duct in the biliary tree we have to fix a tube this is called as t tube right this is called as t tube first of all what is the importance of what is the main function why do we keep t tube there t tube we are going to fix it first of all for the drainage of bile juice so that we can give enough time for the duct to heal second to identify retained stones remember here with the help of these photos you can easily understand t tube okay first of all we have fixed the t tube now the question is after how many days we are going to take a radiological image remember here first radiological image should be taken after 7 to 10 days 7 to 10 days of surgery okay question is if there is no retained stone if cbd looks normal okay then we can remove the t tube but if we identify some stones there if there are retained stones then don't remove the t tube you have to keep it there itself for 4 to 6 weeks for the tract to get mature after that let's see here remember when i show you this photo in this photo you can easily understand remember this is a t tube radiological image with the retained stones remember we have to keep it like this for 4 to 6 weeks for the tract to get matured after that we can remove it percutaneously we can remove it percutaneously remember with the help of a technique which is called as barheens technique right barheens technique next acute cholangitis inflammation infection of bile duct okay what is the most common cause of acute cholangitis it is a stone cholelithiasis what is the most common organism which can cause cholangitis e coli and then klebsiella question is whenever there will be infection now what will be the symptoms here fever and pain most importantly after that there can be jaundice also so this is making one important trial that is called a charcot's trial if you do not treat it on time it can progress to renal's pentard okay where you will see fever pain jaundice along with this you can see that patient can go into shock septic shock and there can be mental confusion now this is an emergency condition you have to ship the patient to icu icu management is required here with aggressive iv antibiotics and iv fluid most of the patients will respond here but 15% cases may not respond so there you may have to perform urgent bleary decompression